Okay, we can call this uh, vlogging or talking head or, you know, whatever you want to, I, I don't know what you would call this, uh, messy hair day. Um, yeah, so let's just, uh, we're just going to shoot right from the hip here. Um, before I start on my list, I want to just say uh, I am exhausted and over the last two nights I wrote an entire script. Uh, that's the that's the fancy notice me way of saying it. The not fancy not notice me way of saying it is uh, I came up with an idea years ago and outlined it and outlined it and outlined it and outlined it and then wrote 30 pages and then uh, didn't like the 30 pages that I wrote and then outlined it and outlined it and outlined it and then left it alone for a year and a half and then panicked when I saw a deadline of a competition I wanted to enter in and then re-outlined it one more time and then wrote it in like a day and a half. Um, so would you, would you call that a wrote a script in a day and a half? I don't know. It's a feature script. Um, you know, cards on the table, uh, it's a vomit draft. And so, hooray, I wrote a vomit draft in two days, which is, you know, a thing that happens. Uh, the rewrite, you, you know, the good, the good stuff comes on the rewrite. So I don't expect any success out of the competition I submitted to, but anything to put the carrot in front of the horse. So mine was a competition I like. So, um, yeah. And uh, the age old question how do you beat writer's block or I guess the cool thing to say now is does writer's block exist? Um, writer's block exists. Uh, that's why it took me, you know, two plus years to write this script. How do you defeat writer's block? Um, I, however you can do it. Apparently the shame of having to pay to submit on the very last day of the extended deadline of competition was enough to get me to submit something and actually write it. Uh, your mileage may vary. So, um, I did bouncing off of that pre pandemic, uh, I found I wrote and was just more productive at Starbucks because I would put a tip in the tip jar and that would make me think I was paying for internet and the shame of having to pay for internet in public made me write. Um, yeah. Is that, is that helpful to anybody? Anyway, I wrote this on my phone, five things that used to baffle me, uh, as a filmmaker, as a young filmmaker. Um, number five, uh, and this is a kind of an ascending order of importance, I guess. Um, excuse me. Number five, uh, the film look, cinematic. How do you make the how do you make a cinematic look? Um, I'm a colorist now, and uh, and I understand lighting a lot better now. But the the short answer is uh, light, uh, light stuff correctly, or how, or pay somebody to light stuff correctly, uh, and or color grade it. Um, but uh, you know, you, you kind of need good lighting shot, and then to color grade it, you can't really. Speaking as a colorist, you can't really color grade crap footage and make it incredible. You could just make it not as crap. So, uh, is film look important? I don't know. That's the whole thing. It's the whole like wax poetic thing in the film look. Uh, if you really want to Quentin Tarantino style, make sure that like ensure that you're getting the film look. Um, shoot on film with a crew that understands shooting on film and a crew that understands lighting film, and there's your film look. And short of that, you know, just make it make it look good. So, uh, number four, set roles, like, uh, people's positions on set. You can, you can Google it, uh, and it's different by, you know, region or territory or country a little bit. Um, but you know, it doesn't really click. It doesn't really make sense until you're on set a lot. And then you see sort of how people work and, you know, no two shows, no two movies are the same, but yeah, you know, everybody knows what the director is. Most people understand what the screenwriter is. Most people understand what actors are. Um, there's a bunch of other roles too. So. Uh, hair and makeup. Yeah, I feel like they don't get any credit. Hair and makeup. I feel like costumes gets more credit because they're, you know, in the in other fields. But you know, hair and makeup on on set. Uh, number three, how long things take. Uh, this is true for filmmaking. This is true for writing. This is true for pretty much anything for me for creative stuff. Um, I have this really bad habit. I don't know if you do of just grossly underestimating how how long something creative will take. Uh, if I'm taking out the trash, I know how long it's going to take. If I'm in a mow yard, I reasonably how, know how long it's going to take. If I'm driving cross country, you know, you can do some math. Uh, writing a script, if I think it's going to take a day, it's going to take 10 days. If I think it's going to, if I think it's going to take a week to shoot a movie, it's going to take 10 weeks. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's one of those things. Uh, I, I know that I underestimate. And so I sort of plan for as much underestimation as possible, especially creative stuff, just cause it takes forever. Um, movies take long to make stuff takes a long time to write. Uh, you know, 
reading reading something takes as long as you know as as long as how fast you can read, but actually creatively thinking about it takes a lot longer. So I work on uh, I work on accounting for the fact that I'm notorious for underestimating how long things take. Um, yeah, and you know, for for what it's worth, a fast TV show can shoot seven or eight pages in a day, which is seven minutes of screen time ish. Um, a good TV show, maybe five pages. Uh, you know, some days you're shooting an eighth of a page. So, uh, that's why, that's why TV shows take so long to shoot. That's why movies take months and months, if not years to shoot, because, you know, a healthy, fast running movie, seven pages still takes what, 12, 14 days at minimum, you know? So the hair is driving me crazy today. I don't know what's going on. Um, when is an edit finished or when is a cut of a film finished? Uh, when you put it out there, it's, it used to be, it used to, you know, there's, there's the, the director or the editor or the screenwriter is never done polishing. It's never done fixing stuff. Uh, at some point it, it's out there and that's when it's done. So that's what deadlines are for. That's what accountability is for. And, you know, if you have a week to turn something in, uh, the, you know, there's no, best practices about it. You did whatever, whatever hours in that week are the hours that you have to do it. And that's that. Um, I don't have much sense of humor for late stuff. Um, I talk about, I, I don't have much, I don't have much patience for people turning in stuff late. That's why I turned in a script on that deadline, even though it was the extended deadline, which I paid a shameful amount of money to submit to. Yeah, it is what it is. Um, you know, it's nice to have people test it with you, test it for you. It's nice to have workshop stuff. It's nice to see your movie in front of an audience before you do a final cut. But at the end of the day, once it's out there, it's out there. So and you got to stand behind it. Um, I've had really bad luck in workshops, workshops where somebody will go, uh, you didn't get my newest draft. Well, you know, the, the draft was supposed to go out Tuesday and now it's Thursday and you submitted a draft Thursday morning. I'm not reading your draft Thursday morning. I'm sorry. The, the deal was, the deal was Tuesday. I'm not reading your Thursday morning revision. That's just, that's a bad habit. I, I got no, I got no time for that. Um, yeah, that's workshops. You know, that's different. If somebody's paying you, you know, and if you're willing to, if you're willing to be the person that goes, here's a new revision. Now that you've already read the old revision, you roll those dice. Uh, it's anecdotally gone very bad for my career when I've asked a favor of somebody and then changed the favor in the middle of it. But you know, you do you. Uh, number one, where do you get money to make films? Uh, that's the, that's the, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? Um, if you're a trust fund kid, if you're wealthy, if you have access to money somehow, if you're a child of the industry and the, your parent is a famous director or producer, maybe that's not a mystery, but I guess it still is. Um, however you do it, you know, however you get money. Uh, it depends, you know, if you're, if you're already staffed, if you're already working on something, the answer is the production or the, you know, production company or the studio or whatever. But if you're, if you're trying to, if you're trying to hustle and if you're trying to get funding for your thing, um, no wrong answers. Uh, you know, maybe don't rob a bank, but, uh, you know, filmmaking is expensive. It's, it's you know, it's expensive hobby. It's expensive lifestyle. It's expensive, uh, to make stuff, especially to get over that hump of stuff looking the difference between terrible and passable, that hump can become very expensive. Um, you know, there's, there, we know, we know about the movies that get made for $10,000 or a hundred thousand dollars. We know about those. Um, you don't hear about the other movies in the sort of 10 to hundred thousand dollar category that are absolute garbage, which is mostly all of them. So, um, where do you get money? I don't know. I'm not really a crowdfunding person, uh, time and place. I think, I think if there was a real mission behind a production, like a documentary or something, then crowdfunding makes sense because not only is there an audience and a want for that kind of material, but also, you know, you're not doing it for you kind of thing. You're not, you're not, it, it, even though it may tangentially help your career to direct this project, um, you know, the goal of awareness, especially that's a big documentary thing. The, go the awareness is the goal. So I could, I could, I could justify crowdfunding that way, but you know, Hey, I want to, I want to make a sitcom, uh, because of me, I can't justify crowdfunding that kind of thing for myself. Um, but you know, Hey, pe people, people will crowdfund anything. Uh, it's just, you know, it's not my style. That's it. Uh, yeah. So how do you close a vlog? Let's see. 
Um, I don't know. I bought a bunch of these the other day. These are for uh, these are for my my my, my lights because they have the five or seven inch dish. So I have a bunch of different uh, different grids. I've been trying them out. I've been experimenting with them. I have one on there right now. So yeah. Cool. All right. Well, see you next time.